Welcome viewers back to another Bible study with Supernatural Freedom in Christ. I'm so glad you can join us today. We are beginning a new series in our lessons, our Bible studies here at Supernatural Freedom in Christ. And the title of this one is Tune In to the Channel of God. Now let me begin by asking you a question. Are you tuned in to the channel of God or are you tuned in to what you were brought up believing? What you were taught by your parents, your grandparents, or maybe some of your other forefathers. Many are tuned in to what their denominations teach. Denominations such as Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Catholic, Pentecostal, and so on. Maybe it's time to step back from these denominational beliefs and tune in to the channel of God and hear what He wants us to believe. A lot of people in the world have YouTube channels that inform you about all different kinds of things. But God has his own channel, and it is the channel we should all be tuned into if we want to know the will and the way and the mind of God. God's channel can be tuned into when we focus on the ways God speaks to us today. I want to help you today to tune into God's channel by starting this new series. Now, I said the title is Are You Tuned Into the Channel of God? But if I was to give it a subtitle, I would call it this, God Speaking, Are You Listening? It will be a series instructing you on the many ways that God speaks to His children today. The key is, are we willing to focus on God's channel and listen to what He has to say? So, our first lesson in this series is entitled, Seven Hindrances to Hearing God's Voice. Now, the question may arise, is God speaking to people today? Well, let's see what the Bible has to say in answer to that question. In John chapter 16 and verse 13, the Bible says, When He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will teach you of things to come. So we see in this verse that the Holy Spirit speaks to people. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. He is just as much God as God the Father. He is just as much God as God the Son. So when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, literally God is speaking to us. Here's another verse in John chapter 10 and verse 27. Jesus said these words. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Now let me ask you another question. Are you one of God's sheep? Well, you are if you've been born again, if you've been saved. Now the question after that is this. Do you hear your shepherd's voice? You should be, because Jesus Christ is speaking today. Now you say, well, I ne maybe I never hear, I don't hear the voice of God. What's the problem? Well, there could be at least two reasons why you may not be hearing his voice. Number one reason is that you're just not listening. I know many times when we pray, and I know this is true of me, I'll go and I'll have my little prayer list that I pray for, different people, different things. And I will present to God my prayer list and I'll pray for all these different things. And so when I get through my prayer list, the next thing I do is I just get up off my knees and go about my business. And many times I don't take the time to just stop and listen to see if God has anything to say to me after I finish talking to him. You see, prayer is a two way conversation. It's supposed to be, but many times it's just a one-way conversation. It's us telling God what we need and what we want. But God wants to speak to us, but we've got to listen for His voice. And then number two, there may be something hindering you from hearing God's voice. Now, the most common way that God speaks to us today is through the written Word of God, the Bible. In fact, I would say this is true 90% of the time. If you are not already daily reading the Word of God, I would encourage you to start today. Why? Because while reading the Bible and studying it, the Holy Spirit will begin to illuminate or quicken a specific verse or a specific passage, causing it to stand out as God's special message to you. Have you ever been reading the Bible and then all of a sudden something just jumped out at you? Well, that's God speaking to you through His written Word. But let's suppose you have been trying to listen to God's voice, but you just can't seem to hear Him speaking to you. There may be some other things hindering you hearing God's voice. In today's study, I want to share with you seven reasons or seven 
hindrances that you may have that will keep you from hearing God's voice. Also, I will give you a scriptural cure for each one of these hindrances. So here's hindrance number one, unrepentant sin. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 and 2 says this, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. If you as a child of God have any unconfessed sin in your life, and you know it, but you just haven't confessed it, then God will not hear your prayer. And you will not be able to hear God's voice speak to you. The psalmist said this, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Somebody once asked the question, Well, does God answer all prayers? And uh, somebody said, Well, yes, He does. He either says yes, no, or wait a while. But let me ask you this question. Can God answer a prayer that He cannot hear? Of course He can't. And David said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So if you've got unconfessed sin in your life, then you're not going to be, God's not going to hear you and you're not going to be able to hear God's voice. So what is the cure for unrepentant sin? Well, number one, you have to confess it as sin. First John 1, 9 says that if we confess our sins, he, Jesus, is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But you've got to go a step further. It's one thing to confess, but it's another thing to repent. Proverbs 28 and verse 13 says this, He that covereth his sins will not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. So the word forsaketh there means to repent. It means to turn away from that sin and stop doing it and going on for God. So that's the cure for this, this unrepentant sin that keeps you from hearing God's voice. Here's a second hindrance unbelief. In John chapter 6 and verse 40, the Bible says, And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. Some people don't hear from God because they don't even believe he exists. Uh, I think of atheists. They don't believe God exists, so they're not going to hear uh, God's voice. I, I think it's funny. I heard one time that the atheists have their own dial of prayer. That's right. The atheists have their own dollar prayer. They dial the number and they pick up and nobody answers. Why? Because they don't believe in God. But still, others believe that he exists, but they don't hear God speaking because they don't believe he speaks to people today. So what is the cure for unbelief? Well, number one, it's a sin not to believe in God. So you have to confess it and repent it just like you did unrepentant sin. And then secondly, you need to ask God to help your unbelief. In Mark chapter 9 and verse 24, the Bible says, And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. So we need to pray and ask God to help our unbelief if we want to hear from him. Here's another hindrance, number three, feelings of unworthiness. Some people don't think that they are worthy enough for the God of the universe, the creator of the universe to speak to them. They think that they are too great a sinner and that they've committed sin so bad that God won't speak to them and that they won't hear from God. Well, what is the cure for this one? Well, the cure is knowing the truth. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 1, it says this, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. There is absolutely no condemnation if you are a child of God. 1 John chapter 3, verses 20 and 21 says this, For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. Now let me stop here to say this. You are worthy. You are worthy to hear from God. You see, God loved you so much that he sent his son Jesus Christ to the cross of Calvary. They, he allowed them to scourge him with that cat of nine tails. He allowed them to put that crown of thorns on his head and they pressed it down onto his head and the blood ran down in his eyes. He allowed them to pluck his beard out to, to where his face was bleeding and he allowed them to crucify him on the cross. And God allowed that to happen to his son. Why? Because he loves you so much. You are worthy because you are 
worthy of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that he shed for you. So don't ever think that you're not worthy to hear from God. Here's another hindrance, number four, unforgiveness. In Mark 11:25 we read, And when ye stand praying, forgive, if you have aught against any, that your Father in heaven may forgive your trespasses. So what is the cure for unforgiveness? Well, unforgiveness is a sin. And you know, a lot of times unforgiveness leads to bitterness and anger. And uh, you, it's hard to hear God's voice when you are, are angry and when you are bitter towards someone. In fact, even uh, unforgiveness uh, will allow demon spirits to come in and take control of your life. So what does Mark eleven twenty six say? But if, we, if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. And Mark Matthew 6, 12 says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So if you want to hear from God, you must be willing to forgive anyone who has hurt you or abused you in any way in your past. You need to forgive them. Here's a fifth hindrance to hearing God's voice. Anger towards God. Romans 8, 6 through 8 says, For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind, that's the fleshly mind, that's the soul, is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you are angry at God for any reason, it will be very difficult to hear him speaking to you. I know some people get angry at God because he takes one of their loved ones in death, or at least they accuse him of taking their loved one in death. Or maybe they lost a job, or maybe they have some sickness in their body. If you blame God for these things or other things like them, you will not be able to hear God's voice speaking to you. So what is the cure for this hindrance? The same as the others. Number one, uh, confess it as sin. Number two, repent. And then here's something else that you need to do. You need to ask God for his love in your heart. 1 John 4:19 says, we love him because he first loved us. So we need to ask God for his love in our hearts. Hindrance number six, fear. Proverbs 29, 25 says this, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. 1 John 4, 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And then 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. So what do we need to do to cure this hindrance? Number one, confess your fear as sin. And number two, ask God, for his love and faith in place of that fear. The Bible says that you have not because you has not. So if you ask God for his love and faith in place of this fear, I promise you, he will give it to you. Now, the last hindrance I want to talk about today is the hindrance of idolatry. Now, most Christians don't even think that they have idols in their lives or in their hearts. So what is idolatry? Idolatry is anything that comes between you and God. You see, God wants preeminence in your life. He wants to have first place. He wants you to love him with all your heart, soul, and mind and strength. He wants you to serve him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. So anything that comes between you and God and serving him in this way is an idol. An idol could be a lot of different things. It could be your job. It could be your family. It could be your wife or your children. It could be money. It could even be pleasure, such as sports and TV. Anything that comes between you and God is an idol, and you will not be able to hear God's voice if you have idols in your heart. If you allow anything, anything at all, to come between you and serving God, it's going to be difficult, as I said, to hear God's voice. Listen to this passage in Ezekiel 14, 1 through 4. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols, where? In their hearts, and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Therefore speak unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, 
every man of the house of Israel that setteth up idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the fault, the multitude of his sins. So what is the cure for idolatry? Number one, you have to confess it. Lord, I'm sorry I have allowed this thing to come between me and you. I confess it as idolatry and I ask you to forgive me. And then you've got to repent of that. You've got to turn away from it and not allow that to be an idol in your life anymore. And then what you need to do is to ask God to cleanse you from idols, from any hidden sin, and any secret faults in your life. In Psalm 19, verses 12 through 13, David prayed this prayer. Prayed this prayer. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep thy servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. When this happens, then you'll be able to hear the voice of God. Now, if you really want to hear God speak to you, you must deal with each one of these hindrances according to the Word of God. Let me review them for you quickly. Number one, unrepentant sin. Get all unconfessed sin out of your life. Number two, unbelief. Unbelief that God exists and unbelief that God speaks to people today. You need to get rid of that. Number three, feelings of unworthiness. Don't forget, you are worthy. You are worth the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number four, unforgiveness. Number five, anger towards God. And last, six and seven, fear and idolatry. Once these are dealt with, then you can begin to hear God's voice in many different ways. The next two lessons in this series on hearing from God are entitled, 24 Ways God Speaks to People Today. And it's going to be part one and part two. The first, the first study will be 12 ways that God speaks to people. And then the second study will be 12 more ways that God speaks to people today. So I hope you will come back and, 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 and continue with this series and learn how that you can tune in to the channel of God. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our Bible lesson today. And if you haven't already, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would love having you as a subscriber. And uh, we just want you to know that uh, we love you. God says that we're to love one another. And I love all my YouTube viewers. And uh, I want you to remember this. As you go throughout the day, remember this. It's great to be alive in Jesus.